Serialization is simply a process of converting a value in a string form. You can serialize pretty much any value that can be stored in PHP, including objects, but you cannot serialize resource types or closures, as well as some of the built-in PHP objects. For example, let's serialize some values and see what we get. So we're going to echo out the value of the serialize function and we'll serialize the boolean true. Then we'll also serialize integer. Let's serialize float. Let's serialize some string. Also, let's serialize some array and serialize some associative array. Let's run the code and we see that we get the string representation of those values. Once value is serialized, we can then use unserialize function to unserialize the string back into its original form. So I'm going to unserialize this array right here as an example. So right after serialize, I'm going to simply use unserialize and let's remove that and let's simply var dump this so we can see what it is and let's clear this out and run the code and we see that we get the array back. Serialization can be useful to pass PHP values around or save them for later use in the database for example or store them somewhere else. When serializing objects however it will serialize its properties and values as well as the class name but it will not serialize the methods so if you serialize an object of a class and store it somewhere like in a database or another storage for later use you need to make sure that the class definition exists as well as the methods that it needs once you actually unserialize that string otherwise you will get errors. For example let's serialize the invoice object here and let's see what we get and we get the string representation of the object. Notice that the class name is prefixed in front of the property name here. That's because the property is set to private and the private properties will get the class name prefixed. If we change the property from private to protected, then instead of the class name, it will prefix asterisk. So if we run the code again, we see that it's prefixed with asterisk. If we change this to public, then nothing will be prefixed. We can then unserialize this value directly. Let's say that we save this somewhere like in a database and then later we want it to unserialize it, we can simply try to unserialize that value and var dump it and see what we get. So we'll clear this out and run the code and we see that we get the object back with the correct ID which was saved right here. Something to note here is that when you unserialize an object, it actually creates a new object, which means that it will not point to the same location in the memory as the original object. For example, instead of doing this, let's simply serialize the invoice object again and then unserialize it into another variable called invoice2 and var dump both invoice and invoice2 as well as let's compare invoice and invoice2 using the identity operator. Let's clear this out, run the code and we see that even though the properties and values are the same, the ID of the invoice is same for the both original invoice and the unserialized invoice. The invoice object itself is different, right? This is number three, this is number two and the identity operator returns false. If we compare it using the comparison operator which is double equal sign then it would return true and it returns true again because the property values are same but these are two different objects that's why the identity operator returns false and we talked about how this works in lesson 2.16 so as you can see we've discovered yet another way to create a new object or kind of clone or copy an object the clone keyword which we covered in the last lesson to create copies of objects does shallow copying creating objects using serialized and unserialized does deep copying so you might see serialize and unserialize functions be used to do deep copying or deep cloning of objects, though it is not that common. And I might make a separate lesson about shallow versus deep cloning and copying if there is enough demand for it, so let me know in the comments. Also, please note that you should never ever pass untrusted data in unserialized function. This can be exploited and unintended code can be loaded and executed when the object is reinitialized during unserialization. If for whatever reason the string cannot be unserialized, it will return false and it will issue a notice error. For example, if we try to unserialize this string again and we var dumped it, this works, right? But if we made a mistake or maybe this got corrupted, maybe it's just an invalid string or something like that. For example, we remove this curly brace from here and run the code, we will get that notice and it will return boolean false. Now something to note about this is that if you serialize the actual boolean false, it will also return false when you unserialize. 
integer, which can cause some problems. For example, let's say that we have string equals to serialize false, and let's get rid of this, and let's clear the code and run that, and we see that it returns boolean false. So in this case, you're not sure if the unserialization has failed or if it was successful if you had the boolean false serialized before. You can solve this by simply comparing the string to the serialized false value, and if they're equal, then everything is fine. Another way you can solve this is by using error handling to catch the e-notice error and then handle that in a specific way. All right, let's move on and talk about the serialization related magic methods. Let's say that we wanted to change the way objects are serialized or unserialized. For example, let's say that in invoice class we had more properties like amount, description and maybe credit card number. Now in some cases maybe you don't want to serialize the credit card number when you're serializing the object or invoice. Maybe you want to encrypt this and then when you unserialize it you want to decrypt it. There are a couple of ways we can do that. One way is by simply implementing the serializable interface and then implement the serialize and unserialize methods. However the serializable interface will be deprecated in PHP 8.1 and it will be removed in PHP 9. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on how this works because it won't make a difference, it will be removed eventually. And instead we'll talk about the magic methods that can be used to achieve the same thing that this interface was providing. Let's get rid of the serializable interface as well as the related methods and let's promote these properties so that we can accept arguments in the constructor. We have four magic methods related to serialization. These are sleep, wake up, serialize and unserialize. Let's talk about the sleep and wake up first. The sleep magic method is called before before the serialization happens and wake up is called after the object has been unserialized. So sleep magic method can be used to hook into the pre-serialization event to perform some cleanup where you specify exactly which properties you want to serialize. The sleep method returns an array containing the names of the properties that you want to serialize. So for example if we only wanted to serialize the id and amount we would just return an array of the names of those properties id and amount and when the object is serialized it would only serialize those properties. As mentioned before, when you serialize objects, it will not serialize any resources like open database connections or something like that. Or maybe you have a complex object that has a lot of dependencies. In that case, the wake up magic method can be used to restore those connections and restore those resources or those dependencies when the object is unserialized. That may have been lost during the serialization. Let's test this out. Let's go back to index.php and pass in some values in the constructors. So we'll pass in 25 as the amount, invoice 1 is the description, and let's pass some fake credit card number. Now let's serialize the invoice and store it into a variable, and let's echo that out and run the code. And we see that it only serialized the ID and amount properties and nothing else. Pretty cool, right? Let's move on to the serialize and unserialize magic methods, which were added in PHP 7.4. The serialize and unserialize magic methods solve some of the limitations and problems that come with the sleep and wake up magic methods as well as the serializable interface. So you can think of the serialize and unserialize magic methods as a combination of sleep, wake up and serializable interface. The serialize magic method gets called prior to the serialization just like the sleep magic method and it also returns an array. The difference between the sleep and the serialize is that the sleep method must return the names of the properties that should be serialized while the serialize magic method must return an array that represents the object and it can be an associative array of key value pairs and can contain additional information other than the current properties. So you're not limited to just the properties like you're limited in the sleep method. You have the full control over how your object is serialized. So for example let's return the properties that we want to serialize as well as the encode the credit card number. So in here we can simply return an array and let's say that we want to serialize an ID which is just the value of the property ID and then we want to serialize the amount and let's serialize description and let's serialize the credit card number but maybe we want to encrypt it but I'm not going to actually encrypt this I'm going to use base64 encoding which I know is not the encryption but I just want to keep things very simple so I'm going to use base64 encode if you were actually encrypting something you would use different functions to do the encryption and we can cover that later in the course so we'll do base64 encode this credit card number and then in addition to the properties as I mentioned before you could
could also serialize some additional values. So for example, we could also serialize foo with the value of bar. Let's run the code now and see what we get. And as you can see, the object is serialized exactly the way we wanted it to be serialized. We have the ID property, we have the amount property, we have description, and we have the credit card number, which is base64 encoded. So it is not displaying the raw credit card number. And we also have this additional element that is not the property of the object. Notice that we did not delete this sleep method, and yet the sleep method was not called. The serialize method was called instead. That is because when you have both sleep and serialize magic methods, Methods, the serialized magic method will take precedence and it will get executed and the sleep method will simply just be ignored. The same applies to the wake up and unserialized methods. When you have both of them, the unserialized method will take precedence and the wake up method will be ignored. So essentially these are redundant and we can simply get rid of them. The unserialized magic method gets called after the object has been unserialized, just like the wake up magic method. The difference between the two is that unserialized magic method gets the data that was serialized as the argument so you can restore the state of your object using that data you can reinitialize the properties restore connections and do whatever needs to be done to reconstruct the object so let's var dump the data here and try to unserialize the object in the index.php so we're going to unserialize it into invoice 2 and let's comment this out for now let's run the code and we see that we get the data that was serialized before so now we can use this data to reconstruct our object and restore any connections or property values or whatever we need to do after calling the unserialized function so we can restore the properties this way and for the credit card number property we can base 64 decode this and for the additional data that we don't have properties for we can do whatever we need to do with them we can either use them for calculations or we can create some magic properties or do whatever needs to be done basically so let's now go back to index.php and simply var dump the invoice too and let's run the code and sure enough we get the properly constructed object and the credit card number is no longer encoded this is it for this video i hope this lesson was helpful thank you so much for watching please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it share and subscribe and i'll see you next time